Hey everyone, I'm Nathan, a Senior 2 Visual Fix Artist at Beyond Fix. Today, I'm going to take you through a breakdown of how I created this Breath of the Wild inspired stylized explosion in Unreal. You'll need to know a little bit about the materials and the Niagara system in Unreal. Let's jump in. This will not be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but more of a breakdown of my effect. So going through the Niagara system here, I'll give a brief overview of all the emitters used here. It contains a flare, a point light, some streaks, a camera facing shockwave, a ground shockwave, the smoke and fire, some embers, the debris, some smaller debris, the trail that connects to the bigger debris, and some ember trails that connect to the bigger debris. The flare itself is quite simple in the materials. I try to utilize a master material as much as I can. In it, I have, for this master material example, I just have a texture samples, some tiling functions, and some offset functions, a channel picker, if I want to change between the color channels, a dip fade, and a master opacity change. The streaks, the material itself it is similar. I'm also using an alpha mask to do an alpha threshold, just to create more interesting fade out when the lifetime is done, which is in this alpha threshold to a function I've made, which is primarily using smooth step to control the threshold and feathering. This is just a debug just to test the function out using a sign. I'm using a bunch of reroutes just to keep things organized, which you can create over here. And then after you create it, they should be listed under here. And this is the big bolt of it. I'm I'm using a smooth step to get in a threshold value and also some feathering controls. I have two different ones, one for using the textures zero to one values, and the one is forcing the the textures to go all the way to white, pure white. So if I show it here, here's a debug of it. Let me change the speed. This one's going fully white, and this is from, it's a bit fast, but the, the max value is the black and white values from this texture. And for this, for the streaks, I'm just using a shape location for sphere, shooting it out with a velocity point, making sure I have the alignment set to velocity so they're rotated correctly into the direction of the velocity. I'm using a sub UV animation using random, so it would randomly pick between one of these four sprites. And then this is what's controlling the erosion. This is a point light, just using a light renderer, and then just animating the intensity over here, which is this alpha value and why I'm using this alpha value is in the light renderer. If you select alpha scales by brightness, the alpha would scale the brightness of this point light, which is why I'm using here. This is why the scale of it is quite, quite large. And the big meat of it is the smoke sphere. Similar to the streaks I had, I'm using an alpha erosion, which I'm using this texture here, which I painted. So it's going to start eroding from the black outwards. Debugging it here, so you can see it either way. I'm also using that similar technique with the emissive. Here's an example. And I'm also using a LUT to drive the emissive. I'll go ahead and show that. So this material function is, similar, is exactly the same as the alpha threshold I was using. Some more controls for just like tuning the range. 
and then using this plugging this into a curve atlas so i have this lut manager with gradient curves inputs these all can be created through miscellaneous so the curve atlas is what stores all the LUTs and then the curve is what you will uh, use to create the gradients. I'm using a normal just to give it some more light lighting information since this is a default lit. I have this kind of bulge function just to like push out the texture so it's almost like it's like expanding. This is the function here. Let me just preview this for example. And if I change this amount, can't see how it expands on the center. So using those combined tactics of using alpha threshold LUTs and this bold, I can create this kind of expanding smoke. And then in the Niagara system itself, it's using a sphere location, some velocity pushing out some more additional velocity just to push up a bit scaling it some gravity downwards some drag and these this dynamic material parameter is controlling all the alpha threshold the emissive threshold the bulge uv bulge and to control the norm intensity so it kind of flattens out near the end of its lifetime embers these are simply you know four different kind of sprites i put on the sprite sheet which using the sub uv animations again selecting zero to three making sure the sub image size i'm selecting how many spikes there are per row and column these have the same mostly the same as the rest of the fix so velocity out and up some drag gravity scaling the alpha some cool noise some gpu collision since i'm using gpu particles for this so they should nicely collide with the floor the scale size by speed just to stretch them out and making sure that they are velocity aligned for the shock rings i'm using a ring mesh which is simply create a cylinder flat, flatten it out the uvs are tiled so the top will be the top of the uvs will be the outer ring and the bottom of the UVs would be thinner. When I have a material like so, it's like panning out. Yes, yeah, so it's panning from the bottom to top. You can see here, so it's kind of expanding. Same thing, alpha threshold, scaling it and uh, fading it in the alpha bit. The ground ring, similar, but I'm, this one I'm not using a mesh, I'm using a sprite, which is simply this, this texture and I'm aligning it to the ground using this facing mode, setting to custom facing vector and using this module align spike to mesh orientation. I'm setting this mesh orientation relative spike facing vector, setting that to one in the Z. So it's like always facing up in the Z direction. The debris, I have a bunch of small meshes and I am randomly picking between those meshes and the initial size particle and the mesh attributes if you go down to mesh render info and if you change this source to this to your mesh renderer it should automatically fill this out if not just make sure you set the the min and max to how many meshes you have so basically you have my instance, I have six different types of mesh, but you can see that the last one is index of five since it starts at index of zero. So that's why the minimax is zero to five. Some random rotation, sphere location, shooting outwards, going up as well. Scaling it at the end of his lifetime. I'm also, with some gravity. I'm also, if you look at the material, I'm also using a uh, emissive color, making a for now effect here. Multiplying a bit with this texture, just to cut it away a bit, just to give it more interesting shapes. And then I'm just animating that with the particle color, like so here. 
this collisions here as well. It's changing the collision radius to using the mesh radius, giving some friction and changing the bounce. There's this rotation base velocity, which I made. It's a Niagara, custom Niagara module. I'm taking the particle's velocity, multiplying by this uh, float parameter to change how much to rotate, picking a vector, and then plugging into this custom vector. So this will change how fast it will rotate. This is the rotation vector will pick which way it will rotate. Since for this instance, I don't want to rotate it on, a, on Z. And then in the solve forces and velocity, I'm setting the rotation vector with that new custom rotation vector output I made from this. So if I wanted it to ro rotate a bit faster, yeah, you can see how it kind of spazzes a bit. The smaller debris is exactly the same as the big debris, just, just smaller pieces, just to give it some more detail. And lastly are the trails. I'm using spawn particles from other emitter. I'm taking the parent emitter, which is the debris large over here and the particle read. So both of them, you can see I'm taking the source from this debris large, setting the spawn rate. Here, I'm setting this material random sampling to output only. I'll explain why. To make sure ribbons work with uh, spawn particles from other emitters, you, you make sure you apply the sample ID as ribbon ID. And I'm also using ribbon UV distance for the uh, UV mode over here. So I'm also applying it as well. This UV mode tile by distance is just so when it moves in space or tile instead of like stretching it based on the length of the trail or the ribbon. So that the output I enabled, which the material random sampling, I'm using this here as a just to enable the randomness. Because if you need so I'm using this to drive the the lifetime. So to edit the lifetime of this ribbon, I'm using this loop float and using the alpha with the sample material random which I'm using this output which will give a random 0 to 1 value and the reason why is if not if I try to do the randomness through the lifetime here each segment of the ribbon will have like a random lifetime so if I disable this and if I do random here. Oh, the width is a bit bigger, but we just yeah, there we go. We give this weird as spaz, spazzy kind of ribbon trails. Let's try and calculate the ribbons, but some of them are dying. Some of the later ones are dying earlier. So instead of doing it here, I'm driving the lifetime and the ribbon width. Yeah, yes, yeah, so ribbon width same as lifetime. Just random width for each of those ribbons. So this random dynamic parameter value, I'm hooked. I am basically adding it to this texture value just to like offset it. So the textures are not all kind of aligned. This texture is for the emissive mask. And this is similar to the smoke I showed. If you see here, yeah, just the emissive smoke texture is just slightly offset it. For each one some acceleration going down so cool noise and just animating the ribbon for this ember trail similar to is the smoke trail taking the source setting the spawn rate here there's not too much since the, it's not using a ribbon i'm not i don't need to worry about this material random and any of the kind of ribbon specific properties all i'm doing is i'm just taking the velocity of the debris large just pushing it back, so it's, the ember is kind of like flying off. Just increasing the shape location, initial shape when they start. Pushing it out a bit. I'm also setting the velocity origin, otherwise I'll just take the center, the system position. So if I don't, don't do this, you can sort of see the velocity is coming from the system's origin. Instead of each of the debris location. So I'm just setting that the velocity origin, which can be found in the output. So you can see here, if I go to show parameters right, 
this is all this is the all the output values I can take I can use for other modules so I'm just taking this sample position and throwing it in this add velocity one point so I can do that by dragging it from the module output into there yep just picking a random spike out of the four some gravity uh, animating the, the alpha some cool noise and yeah, all, all of this is similar to the other embers. If you have any specific questions, feel free to leave a comment and check out more of our Live Up series on our channel. Bye.